Yeah, I just want to record uh, the most helplessly tragic moment in my mother's life. So, like, late, uh, I don't know exactly when this is, about 10 years ago, maybe, I think about 5 years ago, when my mom, before my mom got cancer, there was this lady, uh, check that out, there was this lady named Azra, and my mom was friends with her, I think, when she was younger, or in medical school, or some point. This lady knew where my mother came from, her aristocratic origins, and all that sort of thing, right? She knew. And uh, she had actually moved to New Jersey at some point. My mom had lost contact with her. But uh, she had actually moved to New Jersey at some point with her um, with her family. Her own, that's just beautiful, check that out. She had moved to New Jersey with uh, her own family. And my mom somehow, Pakistani community being really small, got contact, met up with her. And uh, her, one of her sons was, she was very wealthy now. Like her husband was a pharmacist or a doctor and they were in New Jersey. New Jersey has a very different vibe than Louisiana and very wealthy, you know, money people. And uh, she herself, you know, when my mother was younger, my mother was like in the higher position or whatever, you know. And they were good friends. And that's the thing with my mom. My mom was always good to people in a higher position. You know what I mean? She was one of those people who, like, you would want as a boss. You would want her to be your superior because she would take care of you. You know, that's how my mom was. And so my mom's whole thing was about being dom in a dominant position, but, but always being generous and kind in that position. She was attached to both of those things. And I, th I don't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with that. Maybe other than like an extreme attachment, I think there's nothing wrong with that. And so, um, so when they were younger, my mom was actually in the dominant position. But um, now when she found this long lost friend again, way, very late in their lives, like again for my mom, this was like the last 10 years of her life maybe. And then the lady, I don't know how healthy she was or whatever. But probably for her, also last 20 years of her life, you know. And they were friends during the first 20 years of their life. And um, so once they found her, like this lady, obviously her husband had done really well in New Jersey. And she had had the type of life that my mother imagined she would have when they, came, when they got to America. And she, again, she had always been kind and nice to this uh, lady when they were younger. They were good friends at some point. And so this lady started being very, like celebrating meeting my mom and inviting her to the wedding and of her son and just being really really uh help like honoring her and all this sort of stuff but uh, one second but at the end of the day uh the lady saw like figured out like what my the position my mom had ended up in in america you know and instead of having compassion for an old friend and being good to my old friend and this is when i lost faith in pakistani community and order altogether like my mom had so much hope that she found this friend who knew she was who she was where she came from she had so much hope in this friend you know and i could see like i didn't want her to get disappointed but at the same time i didn't want to take the hope away from her you know like she was so invested in this friend like like uplifting her in some way or at least just recognizing who she was and this friend you know because of pakistani status dynamics duke uh you know in the eastern order uh she recognized who my mom was and what had happened like as a victim of human trafficking when she was brought to uh, America under false premises by this psychotic Indian Pakistani guy, you know, and um, what happened is, and what happened was um, uh, she made this psychotic Indian Pakistani guy and she, this lady recognized the whole story. She knew who my mom was, where she came from, and how vulnerable my mom was now, and how excited she might be for someone old in her life to recognize who she was and where she came from, you know? Desperate. And what this lady did was she invited her to the weddings and stuff like that, and 
you know, upheld her as an old friend or something, old family friend. And um, as soon as the wedding was over, she just ended all contact, you know. So this is what uh, other Pakistani people have done to me and my family as well. Like, like high status people always have these orbiter families. And the orbiter families don't know that they're orbiter families. <laughs> I always knew, but like the orbiter families don't know that they're orbiter families. And so at the wedding of the like high status rich people of their children, they have these families that come and they're just like one of us. They're just like our family. But of course they're not. They're more like client servant families and they run around and do everything and um, you know, that sort of thing. And they don't get anything for it. And then, you know, once, once their social utility value as like, oh, we have so many people who are like included in our family. We see, take care of so many people, that sort of thing. Once, that, once that's over, then those families don't mean anything to the, the wealthier, higher status family, you know, that sort of thing. And um, uh, this, this lady just used my mom that way. And I could understand that, like, if, you know, they met in America or something. But my mom was so excited that someone knew who she was and where she came from and was treating her the way she was meant to be treated in life. You know, she was so desperate for that. And this lady fed on that by giving her a taste of that and then and pushing away, you know. Then pushing away, making excuses to fight with my mom and stuff like that. Just because she was uh, a quote unquote low status now, you know. Anyways, that's one of the most tragic moments of my mom's life.